What is the best FNAF game? That's a question that has been up for debate ever since the game first came out in 2014. Many people say that Security Breach is up there due to it being a fresh and new take in the community, while I've seen people say that FNAF 3 is the best in the franchise. Well, after I did my FNAF fan games video, I began to wonder myself what the answer could be. The topic could truly be a bigger debate than any election for the United States. It is all dependent on opinion and this video could get me in trouble with the community, but why I want an answer to this question. So, I went ahead and played all of the FNAF games on the main series to see what is truly the best game out there. Before I start, I want to say that this is all my personal opinion. Though to keep the bias aside, I will be rating these on different score levels out of 5. What I will be rating on will be the main basis of a FNAF game. Gameplay, audio and visuals, jump scares, and story. I will also be judging the difficulty of their final night. Examples being the 2020 modes or the final part of the game that in some games lead into the endings. Whichever game has the highest score in the end will be the winner and will be the best FNAF game that you can play. The first entry into the game series is what sets the standard for the remaining games to follow. Five Nights at Freddy's 1 dropped on August 8, 2014 by a man named Scott Kaufman, who in the past was completely dogged on by critics for his previous games. Mainly notable was one of his games, Chipper and Sons Lumberco. It was hated on because the animals looked more like animatronics than actual animals. Instead of giving up, Scott decided to use this to his advantage, and with that, Five Nights at Freddy's was born. <laughs> Let's start off with the gameplay of the game. You load into the game and you are met with a left and right panning camera where you see two hallways on both sides. At the bottom of the screen we have a bar that when you hover over it, a camera system pulls up. You are able to switch to the cameras and have a nice look around the pizzeria. The other choice we are having to deal with here are Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy. Bonnie and Chica will continue to move throughout the pizzeria. Bonnie attacks you from your left and Chica attacks you from your right. You need to use your lights to see if they're outside your door. You just hit the door button if they are there. Don't be too slow as the door will disable if you aren't quick enough. Next is Freddy. He moved towards the rest hall and has his audio cues. Every time he laughs, he moves. He'll move from the show stage to the diner area to the bathroom and then to the hallway. Once he gets to the corner of the hallway, you better keep the door shut. If he moves again, you'll lose if the door is opened. You will also need to keep the door shut after he laughs again and moves away from the corner. Only reason is because he's waiting outside of the door for when you open it, he enters the office. So you have to wait for him to laugh again and move. Finally, we have Foxy. He needs to be watched on the cameras as it slows him down from exiting his cove. Once he exits the cove, he will start running down the east hall and you will need to quickly close the door or else Foxy will come in and jump scare you. This game keeps you on your toes and you need to be aware of your surroundings or else you will end up in this suit. Gameplay is nice and comfortable for a first big installment of the franchise. So I give the gameplay a solid 3.5 out of 5. <laughs> This game uses audio and visual effects to bring a more absence of action. The sounds are to make you feel hopeless, and I believe this game does it very well. Visually, the game has this old restaurant time feel with these animatronics that have been through a lot in the past years. Only with the static and the visual of the flashing, it's me to give the extra helpless vibe that the game goes for. It puts you on extra alert for something that isn't even in a threat. It is to throw you off and put you off of your game. This game and the audio and visuals are almost perfect, so I'll give it a good 4.5 out of 5. 
<laughs> the jump scares in this game are very decent. A lot of them come out of nowhere which keeps the game fresh as they are also random on when they show up at your doors and move throughout the pizzeria. They look good and their scream <laughs> is terrifying as it sounds like a person screaming before the demise. I will give these a 4 out of 5. <laughs> There really isn't much to go off of here, as this game is just to set up the entire storyline. Sure, there are the papers that show what had happened in the course of the phone call for the first initiation of the Light of 87. Uh, they used to be allowed to walk around during the day, too, but then there was the Bite of 87. Yeah, it's amazing that the human body can live without the frontal lobe, you know? This game will probably get a 1 out of 5 for story-wise if it didn't set up the main reason why FNAF stayed alive for many years to begin with. The Bite of 87. It led to many theories and speculation on who did it. Mainly, fingers pointed to Foxy as he is out of order and his jaw seems to be broken, which is probably caused by the bite. His teeth are also very sharp and they can do some damage. With the bite playing a big role in the FNAF series, I'm going to give this story a nice 2.5 out of 5. <laughs> the difficulty of the 2020 mode for this game is almost impossible unless you play this game perfectly. It is so hard to explain what to do here, but I'm going to try, so here we go. First things first, you need to keep the right door closed at all times while you look at the cameras as Freddy can just pop out the door within seconds. Then you need to keep watching Foxy at a consistent 5 seconds per view to keep him at bay for as long as possible. You then need to keep an eye on the doors in this 5 second period to make sure that Bonnie and Chica aren't at the doors. But if you don't check them at the right time, you will not be able to shut the door, just ending your run right then and there. All of this and with also managing power, with your right door being down at the majority of the night, which in 9.9 out of 10 attempts ends up with the power going out at the beginning of 5 fucking AM. This was literally so hard and there wasn't even a third star in the first place as Scott himself even thought this would never be beaten. This is easily a 5 out of 5 final night for how fucking difficult it was. <sighs> Alright. On to the next game. FNAF 1 became very popular in the community after many popular YouTubers had gone through and had beaten the game. It sparked the game's popularity and it became the talk of the YouTube scene for quite a while. Then, at its first peak in popularity, Scott Cawthon released the FNAF 2 trailer on October 21st, 2014, and then released it on November 11th, 2014, only three months after the original game had released. Everyone was excited to see what new games were coming for story-wise, but they were not prepared for what has to come whenever they boot up the game for the first time. So, you boot up the game and are met with three entryways. Two vents on your left and right and a massive hallway in front of you. There are two bars at the bottom of the screen, one red and one white. The white one pulls up the camera system that lets you see throughout the pizzeria. Only one issue though, you can't see anything. That's okay because you don't have a power meter, only a flashlight meter, which can be used on any camera in the pizzeria to get the best view on who or what is in the specific rooms you use it on. Then you have camera 11. You have to keep a music box wound up or else the puppet will come out and you can't do anything to stop her after that. You keep that music box wound up enough to where you can do everything else. The red bar is a mask. You need to put it on whenever someone is either in the office or poking their head through the vent. You can't do anything else while you have the mask on, but it makes sense because if you show signs that you aren't an animatronic, then you would be yeeted into the next dimension and stuffed inside of a suit. This will work on most of the animatronics, other than the puppet previously mentioned, and of course, Foxy. Foxy will appear at the end of the hallway and then this is where your flashlight usage needs to be mainly used on Foxy as the flashlight will stun him and eventually cause him to malfunction and reset back to the parts and service room. This gameplay gets pretty intense as it keeps you on your toes when you have 
so much to manage with just one night. It makes it challenging and I'll give this gameplay a 4.5 out of 5 as there are some bugs where your mouse will not put on a few times whenever you clearly move across it. The audio and visuals are definitely better than the first game. First off, whenever you load up the cameras and don't have a flashlight on, the building is a lot darker and ominous. You don't know what will be there when you turn on the light. Next, we have, of course, all of the audio that either A, puts you on the edge of fear, or B, it is used to set you off and distract you from your current objectives. <laughs> Finally, we have the more important visuals. The toy animatronic models are very childlike and I believe that makes them even scarier that way, as it could imply that an actual child doll came to life. We also, of course, have the withered animatronics. These guys are all broken down and in disrepair. They are definitely more terrifying than ever and it makes them more dangerous. Finally, we have the visual from when the animatronics are down the hallway, as it gives a bigger, scary feel knowing that they are close and ready to attack. I'm giving these a 5 out of 5, as these are definitely amazing. The jump scares in this game come more out of nowhere. They look good, and even when the puppet is released, her jump scare is also random from when she leaves the box to the office. These will also get a 4 out of 5 like FNAF 1, as some of the animatronics have some out of place jump scares, like Foxy jumping through walls or even the cameras. The story continues off of what happened in FNAF 1. It is drawn to attention on the first night that this game actually is a prequel. Yes, stay with me here. The pizzeria we are in actually takes place in 1987. You may recognize it as Phone Guy mentioned it on night one in the first game. Speaking of Phone Guy, he is another example of this game taking place before the first game as he is alive and gives you the same phone calls like he did in FNAF 1. Now how does this tie into the game being a prequel? Well, if you remember correctly from the first game, Phone Guy actually dies on night four while he is leaving you his message. I always wondered what was in all those empty heads. Back there. Oh no. Oh no. While in FNAF 2, Phone Guy is alive and well. Uh, hello! Hello, hello! Uh, hello and welcome to your new summer job at the new and improved Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. We have a few more shows of proof on this game taking place in 1987. For one thing, our check at the end of the fifth night is dated for November in 1987. We are also shown the newspaper that the pizzeria is closing and that all the toy animatronics will be scrapped for parts and the withered animatronics will take their place once the pizzeria opens up. Phone Guy himself even says he'll take the night shift once the new place opens up. Uh, when the place eventually opens again, I'll probably take the night shift myself. Okay, good night and good luck. The final piece of the story we have here is the first showing of Purple Guy, or also known as William Afton. He shows up in the death mini games, which randomly happen after animatronic jump scares you. We also finally get confirmation on when the killings took place, the day that FNAF 2's Night 6 takes place. Someone used one of the suits. We had a spare in the back, a yellow one. Someone used it. This also ties Golden Freddy into the game, other than him being an Easter egg in FNAF 1. There's still no mention on when the buy had happened, so one had to assume that it takes place on the final night's day. The victim is unclear still to this day, but the suspect is now changed to be Mangle. As the pull apart put back together fun could finally cause the malfunction to bite the frontal lobe off of a child or adult. This game has brought a lot of story and interest that the series needed to keep going. This is an easy 5 out of 5 as it gives much more details on what is happening. Okay, so can I say that this night is harder than FNAF 1? Ari gave that game a 5 out of 5, so I guess you know where this is going. First off, switch to cam 11 and start winding up the music box until you hear the audio cue for Foxy in the hallway. Then start flashing the hallway in a pattern to not waste your flashlight battery. At this point, you need to keep winding up the music box, and as you pull your camera back down, quickly move over and put on the mask as any animatronic could pop into your office. 
Once clear, take off your mask and repeat until you hit 6am. This wouldn't be so much of a problem if RNG wouldn't be in your favor and have animatronics go back to back so that you couldn't even wind up the music box and then have it wind down, as you might as well just get jump scared by the next animatronic you see, as you have to start the whole night all over again. Oh, but don't worry, because sometimes whenever you flick over the mask, it won't even put on and you miss the timing, getting jump scared, and you have to start all over again. <laughs> This sign, of course, is getting a 5 out of 5, as it is probably the hardest game in the series to complete. Oh my god, guys. Oh my god! Alright, let's move on to the next one. Released on March 2nd, 2015, after the major success of FNAF 2, Scott wanted to quickly move on to the hype and make the next installment something never seen before. Thus, the teasers released and got many fans intrigued and hyped for this new game. However, was the hype way overrated? There are plenty of people who say that this game is boring and repetitive, so let's just hop right into it. The way of playing FNAF 3 is straight up flawed in many ways. Why is that, you may ask? Well, take this into consideration. You are given two panels. One is, of course, your cameras that have two levels to it. One's the establishment, and one's to the vents. You are needing to watch for Spring Trap. You need to find which room he is in, and he can hide, so you need to keep an eye out for him. But be careful because there are other animatronics to deal with. Well, sort of. Freddy, Mangle, Foxy, Chica, Balloon Boy, and the Puppet are all in phantom form. Mangle and the Puppet prevent you from using your tools that you are handed at your disposal. Those tools being the second panel in the office. You have four buttons. Audio devices, camera system, ventilation, and reboot all. The audio devices is the ability to lure Springtrap into a connected room. You will need to reboot it either after using it a certain number of times or if you catch Mangle on the cameras as she messes them up when seen. The camera system is pretty obvious as you need to reboot it when the camera screen goes dark. Finally, it's the ventilation. It will go out by mainly getting jump scared by Freddy, BB, Foxy, or Chica. BB will appear at random whenever you open up the cameras and you will have a split second to either switch cameras or close the system. Freddy will walk in front of you through the glass and if you stare at him he will pop down outside and pop back inside your office. Chica will appear on the arcade machine on camera 7 so just switch off of it whenever you see her. Finally Foxy will appear in your office if you stay on the cameras for too long. These guys jump scare you but they won't kill you. More on that later. The ventilation will need a reboot, which gives Springtrap all the time in the world to move. Springtrap is the only one who can kill you, which can ruin the atmosphere on watching for the phantoms. The only big problem is the puppet, which will just get up and close to you and won't leave you alone like you to your ex that dumped you 8 years ago. You aren't allowed to do anything with him just in front of you and the entire time, so just accept your fate at this point. Now why is this all flawed you may ask? Well, you could just soft lock spring trap. Once you see a room he's in, just keep an eye on him and lock the vent that way he can't escape that way. It is boring and repetitive in my opinion. I would give this a 1 out of 5, but the concept is good on paper, just poorly executed. So this will be a 2 out of 5. I will give credit where credit is due, as this is some pretty nice visuals for a FNAF game. It captures the horror themed attraction as I can see this actually being a thing, though that is where my praise ends for this game. There isn't much to go off of for audio portions on this list, other than these examples. Visuals are good, so I'll give this a 3 out of 5. As I had mentioned earlier, Springtrap is the only one that is the main threat to you. There are a total of 7 animatronics, and 6 of them just give you inconveniences. Two of them don't even jump scare you. It catches you off guard whenever you first play the game, but over time it becomes less scary. Along with the fact that Springtrap's jump scare is just him walking over to you. It does nothing for you, which makes this game unscary. This is going to get 
a 1.5 out of 5. Fazbear's Fright takes place 30 years after the events that took place in FNAF 1. The attraction is supposed to open within a week and you need to make sure that nothing happens to the place as the preparations are getting ready to open the doors. The first night goes by quickly with no threat as Springtrap isn't even present in the building. He is grabbed on the exhibition to find more parts and props from the FNAF 1 location as it is hinted in the phone call. Uh, some guy who helped design one of the buildings says it was like an extra room that got boarded up or uh, something like that. So we're going to take a peek and see what we can find. There is one reason on why we know it is the FNAF 1 location. The minigames that show up after each night. There are minigames of each animatronic character from the original game. They all end the same with an error message after following Shadow Freddy around the pizzeria. Once you try to go back and leave, Purple Guy will appear and take apart the animatronic you are controlling. After completing Night 5, you are then led into playing as the Crying Child. This child isn't confirmed to be a specific animatronic, but I believe that it is the child that haunts Golden Freddy as he doesn't make an appearance in this game other than one occasion that I'll break up later on into this topic. Once you walk your way over to the dismembered animatronics, you will be able to move up into the room that would give you errors to begin with. You would then see Purple Guy freaking out at the fact that you are a ghostly spirit and have four others blocking the exit. You follow him around until he does the unthinkable and runs towards the animatronic suit of Spring Bonnie. He thinks he is safe now, but this was the plan all along. He had rushed to put on the suit and had forgotten about one simple thing that happens when it isn't properly prepared. Total spring lock failure. Do not touch the spring locks at any time. Do not breathe on the spring locks, as moisture may loosen them and cause them to break loose. This is where he dies and sits for 30 years as his spirit is trapped inside the suit until he is repaired and put into the attraction. The revenge of the children he had murdered starts to backfire as he seeks his own revenge that leads into the next games. After going through his final minigame, you are met with the bad ending screen. You couldn't save the souls and they are still trapped. How do you free him? There are hidden minigames that are found inside of Fazbear's Fright. It is like posters to click on or a secret number code on the office wall. Once finishing these minigames in the way that they are intended as secret passages, you then need to finish Night 5 all over again and replay the Crying Child minigame. Once that is complete, you will get the good ending. Which is the canon ending that the original four animatronic spirits have finally been put to rest. Ending a saga of torture that has been this way for almost 40 years. This is an emotional ending as many YouTubers didn't think FNAF would have another game come out. While looking at this video's timestamps, you can see that that is the case. However, the story is a mind-blowing thing that revenge was sought for the murdered children, but will end up backfiring at the end. This is a 4 out of 5 story and is easily the best part of the game. You probably already know where I'm going with this. The strategy of holding Screenshot in one room also works here. I'm just going to cut to the chase as this being the worst final night in any FNAF game. 1 out of 5 is my rating for it. With the only thing good to come out of FNAF 3 being the story, Scott had gone quiet for a few months until releasing the first teaser for FNAF 4. This teaser was something different and looked terrifying. I'm going to show you this teaser as it has a big impact on theories and story-wise. The last chapter has a bigger meaning as this game closes out some questions. I'll get more on that in the story part. One thing before we get into this is that I am not mentioning the box as nothing has come from it, so don't ask me about it in the comments below. This is definitely the best unique gameplay style FNAF game has ever had. You are in a nightmare scenario with monsters coming after you. Only difference is that these monsters are actually animatronics in nightmare form. This sounds basic on paper, but this is more terrifying to having to do that act than just thinking about it. 
who have two doors on either side of the room. Why two doors? More on that later. Nightmare Bonnie will come from the left and Nightmare Chica will come from the right. They will slowly reach your doors and this is where audio features and directional sound comes into play. You need to be able to hear footsteps coming from either side of the door. Hear them and move quickly as you won't have long. Once at the door, listen for breathing. If you hear no breathing, shine a flashlight. But if you do hear breathing, shut the door until you hear footsteps walk away. The next thing you need to worry about is behind you on your bed. You will hear little screams and moans. Those are the Freddles. There are three in total, and once you ignore them for long enough, Freddy will come out and jump scare you. You just need to turn around from time to time to shine your flashlight on them to scare them back under your bed. You have to repeat this a lot of times at night, so strategize carefully. We also have Foxy. He will appear in your closet at random and then begin a cycle. You need to go over to him from time to time and shine your light on him and shut the closet door to slowly back him into his previous cycles until he turns into a foxy plush. This is how you survive the first four nights. Night five changes everything. You will be up against Fredbear. He will use his audio cues to tell you where he is. Find him and shine your light on him. If he is at one of the two doors, then quickly close the door after seeing him. If he is behind your bed, then flash your light on and off until he disappears. Finally, if he is at your closet, then just do the Fossey trick on him until he leaves the closet. Be careful as sometimes he switches cue mid-movement. Night 6 and the final night have Nightmare, which works the same way as Nightmare Fredbear. So just do what you did before. This gameplay makes you have to stay silent and there are no other noises than the outside world. This is a pretty scary game to play, so this will get a perfect score of a 5 out of 5. The audio and visuals really take the cake here with how this nightmare fueled adventure happens before your eyes. The room you are in is straight up out of a nightmarish scenario. We also come along with the animatronics, which the models weren't as important as they are now. They are exactly what a child sees in a fear of animatronic robots. These visuals are also getting a perfect score for just being nightmare fuel to many childhood nightmares. These jump scares are the most unpredictable as you never know how close the animatronics are until you go right to the doors. Sometimes your own hearing can work against you and you'll end up hitting your flashlight when you are not supposed to. They scare the daylights out of you so I'm going to give this a 4.5 out of 5 as Nightmare is literally just a still screen when he gets you. The main story of this game takes place during the Before Night Sprite minigames where you need to walk around the location you're in to find where your brother is hiding. Once found, he will jump scare you. The two siblings are part of the Afton family. They are the sons of purple guy William Afton. The oldest being Michael who is actually the guy you play as in FNAF 1 as he is under a secret identity. Michael loves to torture his brother with his foxy head. The minigames will always start with how many days there are until his little brother's party. The little brother who we play as in these minigames is known as the crying child, but the community has given him the name of Evan Afton, so I'll be referring to him by Evan for the time being. Evan runs into many different scenarios and just cries all the time. All the kids make fun of him and he doesn't want this party to happen. But his dad William owns Fredbear's family diner, so while he may not like it, it is good for his father's business. The birthday party takes place after night 5 and it had made the whole world stop in time for all players as it gave the reason for the nightmare field game we are playing. Michael and his three friends all wear masks that represent the original cast of animatronics. Bonnie, Chica, Freddy, and of course... Michael wears the foxy mask that he had tormented his brother with for so long. With William having to worry about the customers and the other kids thinking this will be a funny joke, Michael and his friends take Evan over to Fredbear and make Evan try to give him a kiss. Evan is then stuck inside of Fredbear's mouth, and as the tears of Evan stream down his face onto Fredbear, the animatronic bites down onto Evan's head. The whole world stopped as they had just witnessed the bite of 83. Evan wasn't killed right away by some miracle, but it was short-lived as he was put into a coma from the bite. This is where the game we are playing makes sense as it is the nightmares that Evan has in his comatose state. These hints are given out occasionally as you will see one out of three items appear behind you on the bed. 
an IV bag, flowers, and pills. This is proof that we are dreaming, but still are connected to reality. There is one final mini game after you complete night six. The Fredbear plushie begins talking to Evan and starts saying his goodbyes as the bite had done the damage and Evan was never going to wake up. He watches and cries as his only friends, his plushie animatronics, fade away and leave him there to sob until he takes his final breaths. This had answered the questions on why William Afton began killing as revenge for what Michael did to Evan. It is a dark and twisted mindset to have killing because of your own son. This is why Michael went into hiding and changed his identity to Mike Schmidt in FNAF 1 as he wanted to investigate the pizzeria in an attempt to stop his father and hopefully seek forgiveness from Evan. This story is truly the final chapter to the original story of FNAF. The first four games join in to close out the mind on why William Afton began his killings to begin with. This is perfect storytelling and is getting the perfect score. The final night to this game is the secret 20 mode on the game by typing 24 times on the extra screen. You end up taking on all the Nightmare animatronics with Fredbear and Nightmare coming out at 5 a.m. It is a weird change in pace on this original formula but it is challenging, so I'll give it a 4 out of 5. FNAF 4 being labeled as the final chapter ended up having a different meaning behind it. It was the final chapter of the original 5 animatronics, and the story beginnings of Michael and William Afton. We are now in the new age of FNAF. Welcome to Circus Baby's Entertainment Services and Rental, where you can find the likes of Baby, Funtime Freddy and Foxy, and Ballora. Released on October 7th, 2016, this game was a new and fresh take on the franchise. There are so many gameplay areas used in this game, so in fairness, I will be choosing one of the areas to keep the fairness as multiple would be unfair to put against the other games, which only have one. So let's pick the room that had players stumped and scared at the very beginning. Fun time, Freddy's room. You're having to reboot the panels and after running through Ballora's room to get across to the electrical room that Freddy is in, you must reboot the entire systems of the entertainment warehouse. You must hold the panel buttons until they reach 100%. Once you get off of them, the percentage will start to go down back to zero, but you cannot hold the buttons forever. As the longer you hold the buttons, Freddy moves. You must use the recordings of Bon Bon's voice, his hand puppet. This will slowly reset him back to his idle state. You have no flashlight though, so you must wait until the backup lights flicker so you can see how close Freddy is to you. Complete that and then run back through Ballora's gallery to complete the night. This is intense and fun but has some problems with the voice recording not working, so I'm going to give this a 3.5 out of 5. The atmosphere of the game is terrifying. You are underground as a maintenance worker for the animatronics. The game captures that unkempt, untouched feel as nobody seems to be able to fix and clean the area properly. The animatronics also look amazing and the audio of the sparks and buzzing make it feel like you are surrounded by danger everywhere you go. These will get a 4 out of 5. The jump scares in this game are amazing as the animatronics scream and the face place opening as you are getting attacked really sell it to get these a 4.5 out of 5. You are Michael Afton. You have come to find your father William after William had opened the location due to a Fazbear location shutting down. The opening happened sometime before the killings happened and was shut down years later. Michael is there to look for his father after the Fazbear's fright attraction was burnt down and William escaped. While going through each night, he is guided by a little girl who haunts baby. 
After many nights, Michael is falsely led into the scooping room by this voice, where it turns out to be Ennard, who has led Michael into the scooping room to finally escape the facility by scooping Michael, but keeping him alive to leave and head into the next part of this story. The main story is a bit lacking, but the ending plot twist of Ennard added some points to this. So I will give this a 3 out of 5. You are probably thinking I'm going to talk about the custom night. Well, I'm not. That wasn't added until December, and I want to stay true to the game's core release. So I am talking about the walk to the scooping room. You move through Funtime Auditorium thinking there is someone lurking, but nobody is there. You walk into the room where Baby is on the belt, ready to go to the scooping room. Once you send her off, you are in the scooping room, and this leads to the ending. No problems to run in here, so this is a 1 out of 5. What was suspected to be a nice and fun pizzeria tycoon type game, Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator released on December 4th, 2017. This game looks amazing and friendly at first glance, but holds dark and twisted secrets to unfold. The gameplay is in three stages, build, survive, and salvage. Stage one has you building your pizzeria with a small budget to begin with. You can buy party gear, stages for animatronics, games for children to play, and do it all with the style of risk. Risk comes into play with how dangerous is the equipment you buy. The cheaper the item is, the more risk can come with it. You can earn more money to spend on everything by playtesting the games you buy. Higher score you get, the more fast points you earn. Every 1,000 fast points is $100. The more you buy, the more unlocks. Once you are done building for the day, you move on to stage two, survive. Whilst the pizzeria is open, you are in your office ordering supplies for the next day. Your office is really small with two vents on the side. While you are in your office, you need to check to see if anything in the vents is coming for you. You have a motion sensor to detect movement on where they are hiding. You have an audio button to lure them away for a short period of time. If you hear anything that's right outside your office, you need to shine your flashlight over there to slow them down for enough time to lure them away. The question is, what are you luring away? With that, I give you Stage 3, Salvage. You will find animatronics broken in the back alley. These are the animatronics of Molten Freddy, Scrap Baby, Lefty, and William Afton. You can salvage them for money or throw them in the back alley. You risk them attacking you and running loose in your restaurant without getting the cash from the salvage. Every audio prompt that is given will trigger the animatronic to move into different stages. Stage 3 being that if you continue without stopping them, then you will get attacked. You are given a taser that will shock the animatronics back to stage 1. Once you complete the salvage, you throw them in your back room and continue on with your day. This gameplay is nice, but can really get mind-numbing when it comes to your pizzeria as you can play the same games repeatedly without gaining so much. So, I'll give this a 4.5 out of 5. The only main part of the audio is listening for the animatronics right next to your office and then the other noise being used to distract or drown out the other noises that you need to hear. Visually, the office is cramped, but it doesn't make sense on why there are two massive open vents next to you. This will be a 2 on the audio and a 1 on the visuals, making it a 3 out of 5. The jump scares aren't too scary. The main factor is that they come more out of nowhere as you can be looking one way and then they attack you from behind. But visually they aren't the best so I'm going to give this another 3 out of 5. You are probably wondering why I'm doing the final night before the story on this one. And I have to say you will indeed see why. The final night isn't the hardest final night I have done, but it can be difficult depending on the RNG of the animatronics. So I will give this a 4.5 out of 5. Michael is alive and goes to find Henry Emily, the father 
of Charlotte Emerly, or Charlie. She was murdered by William after being locked out of the pizzeria by the kids attending a party that day. The puppet was made to protect her, and failed. The puppet escapes outside to find her dead in the alley, curling up against her and shutting down holding her. After being rebuilt, Charlie's soul possessed the puppet. She wanted to give life to all the children that William had killed. Michael and Henry make the plan to build a new pizzeria to lure the rest of the animatronics and Afton to finally end this saga. Michael and Henry will both die to finish what William Afton has started, giving us the best ending in FNAF history. Connection terminated. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Elizabeth, if you still even remember that name, but I'm afraid you've been misinformed. You are not here to receive a gift, nor have you been called here by the individual you assume, although you have indeed been called. You have all been called here, into a labyrinth of sounds and smells, misdirection and misfortune. A labyrinth with no exit, a maze with no prize. You don't even realize that you are trapped. Your lust for blood has driven you in endless circles, chasing the cries of children in some unseen chamber, always seeming so near, yet somehow out of reach. But you will never find them, none of you will. This is where your story ends. And to you, my brave volunteer, who somehow found this job listing not intended for you. Although there was a way out planned for you, I have a feeling that's not what you want. I have a feeling that you are right where you want to be. I am remaining as well. I am nearby. This place will not be remembered, and the memory of everything that started this can finally begin to fade away, as the agony of every tragedy should. And to you monsters trapped in the corridors, be still and give up your spirits. They don't belong to you. For most of you, I believe there is peace and perhaps more waiting for you after the smoke clears. Although for one of you, the darkest pit of hell has opened to swallow you whole. So don't keep the devil waiting, old friend. My daughter, if you can hear me, I knew you would return as well. It's in your nature to protect the innocent. I'm sorry that on that day, the day you were shut out and left to die, no one was there to lift you up into their arms the way you lifted others into yours. And then, what became of you? I should have known you wouldn't be content to disappear. Not my daughter. I couldn't save you then. So let me save you now. It's time to rest for you and for those you have carried in your arms. This ends for all of us in communication. This game was hyped up to be the greatest FNAF game to ever exist. After over a year of development, the game released on December 16th, 2021. However, was it the Christmas gift all the FNAF fans wanted? The main hype of the game was that it would be the first official free roam FNAF game. On paper, this would be a 5 out of 5, but there is a big issue. The game runs poorly. Before you say anything about how I probably don't have the processing power, I do. So shut up. Running around, the game will jump between 30 and 60 FPS. Okay, things are loading, right? No, the area freezes when loading into a new zone. The game just can't decide when it wants to run properly and when it wants to jump into a bonfire. The game is also very buggy, with glitches seen all around. Speedrunners use these to beat the game in three minutes, what the fuck? Also, I wasn't even an hour into the playthrough for the video, and I crashed when I opened the door to the diner. This gets a 2.5 out of five. The visuals are 100% the best part of the game as it may not run properly half the time, but the game looks amazing. My favorite room is the green room, the first room of the game. It looks so beautiful and I'm giving these a 4.5 out of 5. The jump scares in the game are okay I guess. 
They aren't the best jump scares I have seen, but I will still give them a 3 out of 5. You are a young boy named Gregory. You are trapped in the pizzeria after close until 6 a.m. You try to get help from Freddy and his friends, but his friends are corrupted by a virus. The virus had tried to take over Freddy while he was performing, but his system shut down instead. Freddy wakes up in safe mode, and is limited based on the power he has. You go the whole night figuring out the secrets on what has been happening in the Pizzaplex. Figuring out that Vanessa has been kidnapping and killing children as Vanny. The real question is why? You go through the whole Pizzaplex looking for new clues. You finally get to an elevator where you find there is an old Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria under the Pizzaplex. It has been using power for some reason, and you find out why. You see Freddy's friends all mashed up into the blob, and then fall through the wooden flooring. You end up in a room, and going through the corridors, you find Burnt Trap. William Afton survived the fire that burnt and killed Michael and Henry in Pizza Free Simulator. The plot twist that we didn't expect, but got. He has been surviving off the blood of the children, and before he can get to full strength, you show up and he begins to take control of Freddy. Freddy fights it off for long enough that you can burn the place down, causing the pizzeria and pizzaplex to collapse. Burn Trap is grabbed by the blob in a final attempt to get rid of Afton for good. It seems that Gregory and Freddy get out, but it is a ruse as the ruined DLC proves that they are trapped after it all had come crashing down. The story is an easy 5 out of 5. I can't call this a final night, so for fairness, I will call it the final hour. This is hard. The final hour, if Gregory is caught, it is game over and you have to start back from the front door all over again. The save spots are disabled, so you must get the main endings in one go. It can be hard, so I'll give it a 4 out of 5. I have covered all the main FNAF games, in my opinion. Don't worry, I do plan on reviewing the other games I didn't cover sometime in the future. So, let's get into the final ratings. FNAF 3 is at the bottom of the list because it lacks challenge. Being able to softlock Springtrap just made it too easy to complete. The story was the best part about the game, but other than that, it was easily the worst FNAF game out of the bunch. FNAF Sister Location had its moments when the game came to story as well. The game was interesting but can be boring at times as all you do is walk around quietly. The story of Energe scooping Michael was an amazing touch though. Security Breach was supposed to be the big change in the FNAF community. The biggest game to release yet. It was a hit but for the wrong reasons. The biggest plot twist nobody expected was massive and boosting the rating and the gameplay was still fun at times, just hard to play. I kind of expected this game to be the middle ground as it gave the foundation to build every other FNAF game out there. It was new and unique to the indie horror world. It was a last effort to make something out of Scott's career and it became life changing practically overnight. FNAF 6 had the best ending in any FNAF game along with the added build your own demise type feel in the FNAF tycoon setting and then fighting off animatronics you brought into the pizzeria yourself. FNAF 2 and 4 are tied for first place, but we need a winner. There is a 0.5 bonus point for one of these two games, and I will tell you why I am picking the game that I believe deserves it the most. FNAF 2 has the most fun gameplay in a FNAF game in my opinion, as it can challenge you to be better every time you play the game. It is hard and challenging in so many ways. However, the main reason FNAF stayed alive was the story. The story revealed when the killings of the five children had happened, but they didn't reveal the reasons behind it. FNAF 4 revealed how and why William Afton had begun killing. Also had revealed why Michael Afton went into hiding and then began to try and stop his father. He wanted to make up for what he did to Evan. The game is also as challenging as FNAF 2 and the area is more scary. So with that, FNAF 2 stays at a 23.5 rating and FNAF 4 takes the win as the best FNAF game with a 24 out of 25.
with that, I have answered the question, what is the best FNAF game?